Hi there, this is Heather, Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Olympus TG6, the tough camera that's waterproof, shockproof, and has a whole lot more features that maybe you didn't expect. Let's get started. The Olympus Tough TG6 is, in my opinion and experience, the best durable point and shoot for its design. Although designed to be shockproof up to 7 feet and waterproof up to 50 feet, this camera does so much more than take underwater vacation pictures. This camera has a 12 megapixel half inch sensor, built in stabilization, can capture in raw format, and has a 4 time zoom. It has an aperture priority that allows you to take advantage of the f2 aperture availability, has a continuous drive at 20 frames per second, 4K video, and built-in Wi-Fi and GPS. But as you can see, this camera also caters to the macro photographer, as it has different macro modes like bracketing, stacking, and micro mode that allows you to put the camera one centimeter away from your subject and then zoom in even farther to get a microscopic look. So whether you're in the pool, you love to take macro photos in your garden, or you just need a tough camera to handle just about anything, this camera is a great one. Not to mention they have attachments for this camera, like a ring light for macro, a telephoto attachment to get a farther zoom, and a flash diffuser. Today we will go over the buttons, doors, and menus to help you familiarize yourself with what this camera is packed with. As I kind of went through in the B-roll video, this is probably one of my favorite cameras, at least when it comes to a point and shoot line, uh, that you want it to be waterproof and shockproof. Like out of all the cameras out there that I've played with when it comes to the waterproof ones, it, you get what you pay for with this camera because it does so much more than just take underwater pictures and the fact that it's okay if it gets fumbled around. Um, so like I said in the B-roll video is you can put attachments on this camera. You, if you push this button here and you just turn the ring, you can then put attachments in this ring here. So like the ring light attachment would attach here. So uh, typically when you get really close to a subject, when you're doing macro photography, the camera then puts a shadow over what you're taking a picture of. So sometimes it can uh, come out blurry. There's not enough light available for it to take a macro photo. So by adding the ring light here, it's supplementing light. So what it does is it adds light to when you're getting really, really close to something and then it'll very easily take the picture. So if you're specifically buying this camera for a small macro camera, you definitely need to get the ring light attachment. They have the telephoto attachment, which allows you to get more than that four time zoom. Uh, they also have the flash diffuser. So if you want this flash uh, not to be as you know blinding, if you take a lot of uh, family pictures, that sort of thing, um, it does help diffuse and soften the light a little bit. And what you do is you just put it on there until it clicks. So very, very simple with that guy. Uh, nothing too much else on the front of the camera. When it comes to the sides, here of course we have our little loop piece for our wrist strap. It does come with a very simple wrist strap. Um, you know, whenever somebody purchases this camera, I always recommend, especially if you're going underwater, to buy a float strap for it as an option. Uh, that way if it does get, you know, slips off around your wrist, it doesn't sink, it just floats right to the top. <clears throat> This side of the camera, we do see a door. On this door, you're going to see two switches. Uh, so to open up this door, you're going to do the little switch and you're going to do the big switch and that will pop right open. Uh, here, you're going to be able to see two different plugs. One of these is going to be to charge it. That's going to be this one right here. Uh, it does come with a charging cord when you purchase this camera. You charge the battery inside the camera. You can get a charger uh, to where you can charge it outside the camera if you do prefer, um, but this is just the way it comes, so keep that in mind. And then this, of course, is going to be a uh, bah, 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 HDMI. So if you wanted to, after a vacation or you got some amazing shots, you wanted to connect to a television to show a group of people, you can connect an HDMI cable up right here uh, to your television set and put on a slideshow. 
And then if you want to lock this back up so it is nice and waterproof again, you do need to make sure that you hold the tab down here. So you go the opposite way, you go big switch, little switch. Now that's all going to be nice and water sealed. Um, it does occasionally happen where people forget to lock one of these locks. Uh, it doesn't get sealed all the way. You might be able to guess that the inside of this door is not waterproof. Um, so when that does happen, water tends to get in there and the camera's ruined. So if you have the opportunity to get a warranty or anything to protect it from water damage, I definitely would do that because especially if you have kids that might be playing with this, they go, Hey, I'm going to take it in the pool, that sort of thing. Accidents happen all the time with the price that this camera is. It's definitely worth protecting it for everything that it offers you. Okay. Going to the bottom of the camera here, you can see that it does have our universal tripod mount as with any camera. Uh, and then we have another door right here. So same thing, little switch, big switch, pops right open. This is where we're going to find our rechargeable battery and where you're going to put your SD card, which is uh, spring loaded. You want to make sure that you push down to pull it out. That is something that's very important. Do not try and pry it out. You will break it. Um, and then of course, same thing, hold the tap down. There you go. Big switch, little switch, and that's nice and locked up and all set to go. Uh, going to the top of the camera here. So as you can see, it does plainly let you know, hey, I have GPS available and I also have Wi-Fi. Uh, your GPS can be uh, turned on and off uh, very easily with the switch right on top here. Log is to be for it to log into your GPS and your location uh, versus off, which is, um, you know, not going to turn your GPS on. It doesn't tag your location in the images. Um, now the reason that somebody might want to have GPS on is for instance, if you travel a lot, uh, you want it to, you want to be in the middle of the ocean on your cruise and take a picture. You want to tag you right there in the middle of the ocean. And, um, if you have organization tools like Apple, um, does it with their iCloud system where it can save it by location. So if you're like, oh yeah, we went here. Um, I don't remember when it was, but I know that we went here so you can go and find that location and there are all the pictures you took at that location there. Now, the reason you would want to keep that off in cases where, you know, you don't care to use it or not is that the GPS can run the battery out uh, fairly quickly, which is why a lot of cameras these days uh, don't have GPS available. Um, so do keep that in mind. If you want to specifically log the location, switch it to log. If you don't care about it, keep it off. That way you save your battery. Of course, we have our on and off button. So you just hit that there. The little orange light turns on and uh, makes it available for us to get ready to take pictures. When you turn your camera on for the first time, uh, you do want to make sure that uh, you two, you put in the date and time. Uh, once you do that the first time, it's not going to ask you again. So it's just something to keep in mind there. This here is going to be our shutter button. So if you push halfway down to focus, it'll light up green. You push all the way down to take a picture to zoom. You're going to hold it toward the T to go telephoto. Okay. So it's going to zoom fairly close to my fingers here. And then if you do to the W, it's going to go back to wide angle shot. So it doesn't have a ton of zoom, but it does have some. So at least it gives you some availability there. And then we have our little adjustment dial, which right now we have it set to auto, which we'll go over this here in a minute. So it's not really going to do anything, but in situations where you might be on your uh, aperture mode, your P mode, um, somewhere where you might be able to change your settings. That is what it's going to be for here. So going to the back of the camera here and see that we have a little red button. This red button is going to be for taking video. Um, as you can see, it does have a video mode here, but if I were to just push this button on auto, it's going to start taking a video right away. Uh, push it again to stop recording. 
So you don't have to be on the video camera mode in order for it to take a video. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, so going to our mode dial here, which is on the back, green of course is going to be for auto. It's going to be for just general every day, laying the camera have full control. Uh, you don't really have any control over this aspect here. So in auto mode, if you push your OK button, it'll allow you to open up your quick menu here on the side. So a lot of these are actually going to be grayed out in auto, but they're going to be able to be changed in P and A mode. So just to kind of go over these and what they do is the top one here is going to be uh, kind of like a color um, option here. So if you want a more vivid color, standard color, uh, black and white, that sort of thing, you would change that here on auto. You cannot change that ISO, which is going to be your image sensitivity and auto. Of course, it's only going to allow you to change to auto. You can't pick a specific number in white balance. Again, auto is going to pick auto, but in your P and A mode, you can pick sunny, shady, cloudy. However, cameras today are really, really smart at determining what the ba white balance should be. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. You have your autofocus setting, which of course in auto, it's going to pick autofocus. You can pick manual focus, macro focus, uh, whatever you want to do there. You have your ratio size, which you can ch uh, change in auto as well as your manual modes. Uh, four by three is going to be the most common. Uh, so it's really just kind of up to you. Uh, you can change your image quality. So raw JPEG, raw and JPEG. Uh, you can change your video um, quality there if you want HD or 4K and how many frames. Your image stabilization. Now this you cannot change in auto. It's only uh, changeable in your manual modes. If you are shooting on a tripod, uh, this is something that you want to have turned off. Um, you have your flash mode here, which of course auto means auto flash, or you can have, turn it off. Uh, those are your only two options there. In your manual mode, you're able to do red eye floss, force flash on, you know, all of that fun stuff. Uh, there's flash compensation, which you cannot change in auto. It's to make it a little bit brighter or darker, depending on what you want. If you want to have a little bit more control of that, this is going to be your drive mode. The single square, of course, is going to be to, if you uh, ha happen to hold the shutter button down, it's going to take one picture. If you're on the multiple squares with the H, it's going to take that picture at 20 frames per second. So if you click and hold the button down, it's going to take 20 pictures per second of time. Uh, and then, of course, you have your timer options as well in case you need to set it up on a timer. Uh, we do have our metering options here. so. In auto, you only have evaluative metering. Uh, that is going to consider lighting through the entire image. In your manual modes, you can do spot metering, which allows you to pick a certain spot area that you want to take the light from. Uh, then we have face priority, which on auto is always set to on. You can set that to off in your manual modes. And then we have uh, your accessory. So when you change that ring out to a certain accessory, I have like, you, you have to actually go through and go, okay, I have this accessory on. So it actually can, uh, program it, program it accordingly. So just so you know about that. Also your universal exit button to get out of any menus is your shutter button halfway down. So something to keep in mind. Uh, so we'll go on to, uh, our other uh, modes here on our mode dial. So P mode is going to be your uh, program mode. It allows you to change either your shutter speed or your aperture. Um, when you turn it to your P mode, this now becomes in charge of your um, exposure. So you can actually make the image brighter or make the image darker. Uh, so something to keep in mind there. Uh, your A mode is going to uh, primarily to control your aperture. So this camera has an aperture availability of uh, f2, which is fantastic. 
Uh, wide open means more light. More light means better pictures, better depth of field options. C1 and C2 are going to be uh, custom functions. So you can program these for specific video modes, for specific picture taking modes. So if you wanted to program one of these to do black and white pictures, um, all you have to do is switch to the C1 uh, whenever you want to do black and white, that sort of thing. Uh, so they're just customizable. You have your video camera mode, which is, of course, primarily for video recording. This is going to display your mic levels, that sort of thing there. So it's going to give you more access to uh, all the different video options. Uh, then we have our underwater modes. So when you switch it to underwater, it does go to this um, menu here. So it gives you several underwater options. It's not just one for all. So you have underwater snapshot, you have underwater wide angle, underwater macro, if you want to get really close to that coral and plants and all those things. Uh, underwater microscope, so like that's a picture of a shrimp there, which are incredibly tiny. So if you want to take a super close up, um, and then we have HDR, which is uh, just high definition when it comes to the way it takes pictures. So, you know, you have a few different things to try when you're underwater, which is kind of cool. It gives you some options there. Then we have our little microscope mode. This is for our macro mode here. So we have our microscope, which is just shooting up really, really close. That allows you to practically, I could put my, the camera right down here on my mat and it's going to focus and take a picture. It's, it's really incredible how close you can get to your subject. And uh, for macro shooters, that tends to be one of the most uh, frustrating things is they just won't let them get close enough, uh, depending on how close you want to get. Uh, then of course we have focus stacking. So what this allows you to do is especially if the, uh, you know, it's a bug or you're, you're kind of shaky. You don't have a tripod, that sort of thing. What it'll do is it will start over here and it'll take every picture leading up to this point. And then it will come, uh, it'll combine them and give you a, uh, a really good picture overall. Uh, so it'll take the better, um, focus areas and combine it. Then we have focus bracketing, which does the same thing, but it saves all of the pictures. So you can choose later, which one that you like best. So with a flower that might have uh, multiple things sticking out in the middle, and you don't really know, like your camera wants to focus on one of them, but you want to focus on this one over here, that sort of thing. Um, it'll allow you to take several, um, photos of the same shot, uh, with different focusing areas. And then of course you have your microscope control, which is probably one of my favorites, uh, because it'll allow you to get this close to the mat, but it'll also allow me to zoom in farther to the mat, uh, to be able to get all the little itty bitty teeny tiny fibers, which is just incredible. So if I were to do that, okay. And I were to angle it so I can get a little bit of light here. And then I were to zoom that thing. Come on. That thing's going to focus. No problem. Like pretty incredible. I mean, that's, that's what my mat looks like up close apparently. So it's pretty darn cool. So going on to our next one here, we have our SCN mode, which is going to stand for scene. So this is going to be automatic presets. So you have people, nightscapes, motion, scenery, and indoors. So if you want to be very specific with what you're taking a picture of, but still let the camera have control over that, that's what you're going to do is you're going to go into your scene modes. And then we're back to auto. Uh, so the other buttons on the back of this camera here, uh, you have your info button, which is just going to change how the screen looks. So depending on how you want it to be displayed, you know, your zoom, you know, just, just general 
things what you want to show on the screen. We have your playback button here, uh, which is indicated in blue, which means uh, the little blue trash can here, when we push down on our dial in play mode, it's actually going to uh, be for deleting the pictures. So if we wanted to do that, so we'll just delete these guys. There we go. And now we have no more pictures, which is fine. Um, if you push up on this dial here in auto, not going to do a single thing in your key mode. That's going to change your uh, exposure, which already the dial up here is programmed to do so. So not something I would really worry too much about. Uh, same thing in your A mode. Um, if you push to the right side here, whoops. Push to the right side. This is going to allow you to change your flash modes. Naturally in auto, your two choices are only auto and off. And uh, you can change everything else there. If you go to the left here, and it's not going to do anything in uh, your manual modes here. But if you have it switched over to, say, your micro mode, okay, and you pick your microscope mode and you go, well, I don't want to zoom in. I just want to like, I want to try the bracketing mode. If you hit left, it's going to bring you right back to the menu here. So that way you can just go, okay, I want to do the focus stacking, you know? Um, so it allows you to change it uh, from there. Uh, if you push down, this is going to be your drive mode. So very similar to what we went through in the uh, quick menu here. These are just uh, other quick ways to get to these settings. And then of course we have our menu. So if we hit our menu, that is what we're going to go through next. So starting at the top here, um, when it comes to the menu is the, the shooting menu. Really, you just showed 54%. Uh, you can reset, assign your custom modes, which is going to be the C1 and C2 that we talked about earlier. Your picture mode, which is going to, again, change the color, vivid, black and white, whatever you want. Um, autofocus area, so you can actually choose a target area if you want it to be uh, the whole area, one specific area, or tracking if something's moving. Um, so you can kind of pick general area there if you want to do that. Uh, if we go down here to the next one, you have a uh, time lapse available, uh, interval shooting, if you want to try that out. So you have uh, your focus bracketing, if you want to do that in just regular shooting mode, uh, focus stacking as well. You have your movie, you know, settings here, your recording volume, if it's too loud, uh, your frame rate that sort of thing there, your playback menu, if you want to auto rotate, uh, connection to smartphone, where you can actually transfer images uh, from the camera to your smartphone while you're on vacation, if you want to share those right away. Um, I do believe that you are able to control this with your phone as well as a remote control. Uh, and then of course we go into the most laid out menu here. So we have our autofocus menu. So if you want your autofocus illuminator on, um, your manual focus assist, you have your info settings, which is this button here, uh, live view boost, flicker reduction, which is just pretty much good on auto, uh, displayed grid. If you need help composing and balancing your images, uh, peaking color. So what that means is that if you want the peaking to show where it's like, Hey, I'm not getting any detail here. It's too bright. It's going to, uh, light up white or a different color. Uh, the volume while you're shooting, uh, your HDMI settings, uh, you have like ISO auto set. Um, I would definitely set a limit to that guy. Um, so because the sensor is so small, I would probably say like 800 or 1000 for the max, uh, when you have your ISO on auto, so you don't have to worry about it. Something to keep in mind there. Uh, your noise filter, noise reduction, standard and auto are fine. 
uh, you know, you have your custom flash modes, which I wouldn't worry about. Uh, your white balance, again, I would just keep it on auto. Uh, color space, keep it on R sRGB, it's going to be the most common. Uh, if you want to reset the file name in the cards, uh, if you want to add copyright settings to record your GPS location, um, you do pixel mapping, level adjust, I mean, you, you can, you know, uh, change the sleep, like if you leave it for one minute right now, it'll just kind of go into a sleep mode so it saves the battery, you can change the time on that. Um, and then it goes right back to the top. Then, of course, we have our last menu here, which is our setup menu, card setup. So something um, I always want to go through here is when you have your card set up, um, after you've put your pictures on your computer, they're safely on your computer, you've made sure they're backed up to your computer, I cannot stress that enough, you want to start over before going and taking pictures at a birthday party or, you know, the beach or vacation or wherever you're going. You want to start fresh. You always want to go into card setup under the wrench and you want to go to format card. Now I don't have anything important on this card. So, you know, that's okay for me. It's letting you know when you switch to yes, Hey, by the way, I'm permanently erasing everything. Um, so just be aware of that. So when you click yes, it'll go through its thing. And now it's a fresh card. Now, the reason you want to do that instead of just using your trash can to delete all is because when you use your trash can, it's deleting the, um, the viewable picture, but the data behind the picture is still stored on the card, which means it's still taking up room. So if you've never formatted your card, if you've always just deleted and take pictures, delete and take pictures, it's only a matter of time before, um, you know, a sort of virus happens where, it starts eating away pictures, you get a corrupted card, you lose your future images, and it's just a real bummer and no one likes to go through that. So just every now and then when you're like, yeah, it's been a while since I formatted my card, all my stuff is backed up, just make sure that you format it. Uh, we can go into date and time settings, your language, your monitor brightness, um, your record view. So after you take the pictures, how long it comes up for it's just half a second is usually just fine. And then, you know, if you want to change your Wi-Fi settings, how it connects to your phone. Um, that's pretty much it. You know, this camera is fairly simple. It is a lot of fun to play with. Um, you know, it's got a simple layout, not to mention it's nice and tough. It uh, comes in black and it also comes in like this shiny metallic red color, uh, which is kind of flashy and fun. Um, this camera impresses me. <clears throat> so I hope that this camera impresses you as much as it impresses me. Um, the thing is that I, I've always been really critical about water, waterproof cameras because it's just all like, great. So I need a camera for out of the water. I need a camera for in the water. You know, why, why do I want to take two cameras everywhere or several cameras, uh, when it comes to just something really simple? Um, but this camera really goes above and beyond when it comes to uh, what it can do. It's not just an underwater camera. I've had people buy it for their kids. I've had people buy it for vacation. People buy it specifically for the macro. I've had even um, like construction workers where they're just like, hey, I need to take pictures of the sites and stuff. I need something tough. There you go. It looks tough. It is tough. And uh, it can survive through a lot of stuff. And it gives you great quality images. Uh, if you have any questions about any uh, future cameras or even this camera, please let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that you have. Until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.